Good morning. Oh wait, I have to do this. This is a disclaimer. And this is now dutifully has been executed. So good morning. I hope that you're well. I hope you had a lovely weekend. I hope that you could sleep in the heat wherever I are in the world. Of course, if you're on the North Pole or South Pole, you could probably sleep all right. But for those of us sort of caught in the middle, especially in the middle middle, it is darn hot. I want to see if you guys can hear me. Can you can you all hear me? So looks like you can hear me. Right, the next thing I'd like to do I'd like to do a, a latency test, please. Five, five. Okay, I got a three second delay. The three second delay seems to be the minimum that I have achieved. Okay, so I have something I'd like to speak with you today. So I just want to say good morning and tell you I've changed my t-shirt. So, you know, you can't knock me for, you know, wearing the same t-shirt twice. Now that we've established that, let's get on to the charts. Unfortunately, my PC, the PC that I have ordered, has not arrived yet. So I, uh, I wanted to show you this pattern here. We go out on a four hour chart and it's, it's pretty clear to see that uh, it looks like a distinct possibility that we have reached a top of a range. So. I'm just going to sort of amateurishly try and draw this trend line from this point here. And we're just trying to capture as many of these tops that we can. And hopefully you should be able to see the point that I made earlier on. If we then hone in on a 10 minute chart. You see, okay, wow. Now I got a swing long position in the DAX and I've been running that since 487. If there was something that would get me to start closing my position, it would be a pattern like this. Sorry, it would be a, a pattern like this one here. So what I'm going to do now is to start taking some profits off this position here. So I'm going to start doing that behind the scenes. But that's not really what I wanted to talk to you about. I wanted to tell you that I've taken a small short position in the Dow. You see that down here. Now, what I want to talk to you about is why have I done that? And in order for me to show that on a chart, I would need this streaming software to be able to show you my other chart package, which is an e-signal chart package. And I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. So I'm going to have to explain it to you, like well, hand gestures. Um, and I, th I think that's the, the best way of doing it uh, at this point in time. Hang on, I just need to close a bit more here. So I've closed my swing long in the DAX. Probably should have done it somewhat higher, but it's done now. 
and I'll do the same for my footsie. So you can now see that has now disappeared, gone. So that was a good swing trade. Now let me try and explain the, to the best of my ability why I would do such a thing because we're in a strong bull market and I don't dispute that at all. And But here's the thing, uh, this pattern that we've just seen here on a four hour ch chart if, if that's indicative anything, then it would suggest that this market could be headed back down again. And if that's the case, well, I don't want to sit through a 300 point correction. I'm not disputing that we are in a very strong bull trend, but the chart is also the chart. But let me get to the real point now. A long time ago, Oh, Jesus, that sounds like the beginning of a life story, but it really isn't. A long time ago, I began to segment my charts up in something that looks like this. Okay. And what you see here is that it starts off with I segmented into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to be mindful of more than just chart patterns that that we are used to in a conventional sense. I wanted to be mindful of chart patterns that perhaps were more governed um, towards what time of the month it was or what time of the week it was. And during that research, I uncovered a pattern that I believe that I was the first in the world to discover. And I don't mean that from a point of view of, oh, hang a metal, hang a metal on me uh, because I am fucking great. Nothing like that. It is just that, you know, I'm, I'm happy that I discovered something like this. Like I discovered the 500 day cycle, the 72 week cycle. I, to my knowledge, no one had ever before spoken about that or had shown that to the world. So uh, I, have, I have spoken about this particular uh, setup in in, in in seminars. I'm just going to have to close the window. I'm going to swelter, but I'll close it. Thanks for your patience. Might not be the best of idea in the world to wear a long sleeve t-shirt either. I am mindful of that. My, uh, my Dow position, just want to reiterate that I have shorted the Dow at 34,502.4. And I just want to show you the proof of that. Here it is. It's right here. It's called in real time. Um, I know that because moments ago it was, <laughs> it was actually in minus. I haven't got a stop loss yet. That's why I'm not announcing it in the Telegram group. So let's get to it. Why would I, why would I do something like this? Well, during my research days in this, and just be mindful, I have spoken about this in a seminar, and I can bring up that PowerPoint if you want to. Um, but it's a, it's a very long PowerPoint, and I think it might not be so suited for a Monday morning. I think maybe we should try and find a, an opportune time during the week where I could go through this. Um, but what the pattern, uh, what some of the research that I uncovered was that whenever you in the Dow Jones index, and please listen very carefully now, I, I mean, real, listen, don't just pretend you're listening, but really listen. When we look at a chart, it could be any chart from a brokerage, what we see is the continuous trading flow over a 24 hour period. And some of this may even be the broker making up their own prices, um, simply just provide a market becoming a market maker. So in the old days, for example, you would have a DAX chart during the night, 
but the DAX wasn't actually trading during the night. It was merely the broker that made a market during the night. And they did that by following whatever the Dow was doing. And so if the Dow rallied 10 points, they would mark up two or three points on the DAX index. But these days, uh, many of the futures like the FTSE future and the DAX future trade throughout the night. But, and, and the FTSE, sorry, the, the, the US indices obviously, they're trading pretty much 23 hours and 30 minutes every single day. So back to it. This pattern that I have uncovered does not take into account what happens, what I call outs, outside hours. So you differentiate between inside hours. That's when the US stock market is open. And that opens, let's take the, 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 the uh, uh, using the, the, the time from New York, it will be, I think it's 0930 Eastern time, or is it 0830? I don't actually remember. Uh, 0930, 10, 30, 11, 30. I think it's 0930 because it's always um, five hours behind uh, um, the UK time and six hours. And so since I, I I spent 20 years of my life in London, then you sort of get used to that. So, oh yeah, it's a, anyway, <clears throat> so this pattern is purely focused on what happens between that moment when the stock exchange in New York opens and it closes. And so what the research uncovered was that when you during the Friday trading in the Dow Jones index, I'm going to repeat that. If during the time the Dow was open during the Friday, if the price during the Friday's trading was unable to surpass the highest point of the Thursday, the day before, wherever you close that Friday, the odds were more than 90% that during the following Monday, whatever low was made on the Friday would be retested on the Monday. And so if we're looking at the Dow Jones index right now, so here we are, and the low on Friday was 34,200 and 24. So the the odds of ba basically, oh, shit, you're not looking at it. Sorry, here we go. <clears throat> so the odds would then dictate that there's a very high chance that we are going to see a the Dow trade in negative for today and the lows of Friday should be surpassed or at least making a double bottom. So when you're coming to work on a Monday morning and you see how high the European markets were called up and you're thinking to yourself, well, I'd like to be short, but uh, maybe I should just let this, whatever is going on in, uh, whatever is going on in Europe, maybe you should just let it unfold. And it can at times be very hard to maintain that composure during a, a trading session, waiting for the real US market to open later in the afternoon. So, um, and of course I am, as, as any trader is, I know that eight hours of wait can be a long time. But that's the pattern. And that, uh, that sample space uh, covers 10 years. So for 10 years worth of data, I've gone back and I've said, right. And, and because I do this manually, uh, I've gone in and said, was Friday's high lower than Thursday's high? Okay. Check. Yes, it is. What happened on the following Monday? If it wasn't, then I just didn't even look at it. It's just, well, then it did have no, it didn't have any relevance. And, and all the documentation is something that I uh, can go through with you. Uh, in the PowerPoint. I'm going to just see what you guys have. All right, so you guys are telling me. Uh, okay, so you are. Right. Right, look. Uh, 
I'm just looking through the comments, just uh, wondering if there's any questions. That's all. You're very quiet this morning. I don't blame you. Yeah, 90% is very big. In fact, it is. It's so big, you have to wonder if I have made a mistake. Because it's, it's rare you get something like this in the financial markets. That's why, as you can hear in my voice, I'm not exactly selling it very hard, am I? It's more like, hey, you use this information, whatever you want. Okay, let's uh, take some of the private questions from people. Have I got my new grade and my, my new PC? Sadly, no. Um, I got new microphone equipment. I bought extension leads. Um, but they called me and said that they had done a stress test because of the they had they had implemented a Kingston a Kingston uh, RAM and they've upgraded the RAM and then they'd done a stress test and it failed. And uh, and I said, oh, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that they have done a stress test. Uh, I'm just a little bit uh, sad that I haven't got my PC yet. Are you familiar with Al Brooks 18 bar rule? Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest and say no, because I think my answer is vague. I am mind, I am vaguely mindful of it. It being that if the market has not done a new high or a new low within 18 bars, the odds are high that we are in a trading range but I could be completely wrong about that. Yes, that's right. It was in the sample space. I found it uh, 21 times. Anyway, I think we should, uh, I think we should go through the PowerPoint presentation. So maybe I'll just talk to Lenny about this um, because it's going to be, it's going to be a quite a sizable presentation. I was almost right. Well, Peter, Peter Connor, could you, why don't you just type the definition? This is the FTSE on a five minute chart. The sad truth is that I was really bullish this morning. Over the weekend, I had sat and I had gone through the different scenarios. Scenarios being, what should I expect from the FTSE today if so and so had happened on Thursday and Friday? And my, uh, and my analysis was, you should expect a really big spike up right from the get go. And this was supported by that the FTSE on a Friday night, even as the Dow Jones sold off, still just managed to hold its level and closed almost right at its high. So where it closed on a Friday night, um, if we're looking at a, at a 10 minute chart, it, it closed over here on a Friday night and it was up there. So when I came to work, I was expecting a, a big push up and then I missed it. And I, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but you made a plan, something distracted you. Maybe it was a mobile phone. Maybe it was a someone or something. And you just looked away for a few minutes and you wanted to buy the FTSE at 46, 48. And now it was gone 58 and you're thinking, oh, let me just, let me just wait. I'm just, maybe I can get 56 and then it goes 62 and you think maybe I'll get 58. Maybe. And, and the, I mean, look at the, look at how 
the FTSE behaved this morning. Just if you were not on board and you were a little bit as, uh, have you guys ever met my, uh, my friend and mentor, uh, David Paul, Dr. David Paul, he said to me once, he saw me do this. He said, you're being a prick for a tick, young man. Yeah. I think any one of us have ever been in the company of Dr. David Paul will remember him saying that don't be a prick for a tick. If you want to get in, get in. Don't just dilly dally. Anyway, I dilly dallied and I dilly dallied big time. Then up here, I had some, uh, uh, I have I've done some, some, some wave calculations and this is not Elliot wave, but I just came to the conclusion that if we're going to have a big spike up, then we probably want to be a seller short around the 7188 level. And it went 7190, the first one we lost a little bit on, and then the second one. Well, look, it's not, it wasn't a bad trade. I sold here at, uh, at 88, 89, and we got out in the 70s. But we could have done a lot better. Yes, I know we could have done a lot better. It wasn't designed to be a scalp trade, nothing more than that. All right, I'm going to see if that Peter guy has answered the questions yet. Well done, Lucas, for scalping it all the way up. Uh, let me take some of the questions. Any news about the broker report? Yes. So the broker report was filmed on that day off and the guy who filmed it, he's going to put it together. He's starting that today. So that would come during the week. Uh, I I'm not making this presentation uh, available to the public. I don't mind sharing the results, but. Uh, okay, 18 bar, legal 90 minute into the trading session, 90% probability that the high of the day has already been reached and 90% probability the low has been made, I think. Yeah, that's probably a route, right? I think uh, I remember those percentages. Uh, I can probably dig that out. Okay, here's go. Al Brooks, 18B rule. On a five minute bar, if the price goes lower after the 18th bar, there's an 85% chance that the day high within the first 18 bars will not be surpassed. That is Peter. I love stuff like that. Man, I'm going to post that. Now that's sharing. So just to make sure you, you get this, I have not put a stop loss on the Dow position. I, I could have put a stop loss in, but I just chose not to. Ben, this would be uh, in hours. So now the FTSE is actually below where it started the morning. See that? Now, in my book, do you know what this pattern is called here? Let me show you on a 15 minute chart here. This pattern here is a pattern that I actually taught in my seminars when, you know, before COVID, I would do a one day seminar in Denmark uh, two or three times a year. And uh, this pattern here 
is a pattern that I call a trapdoor pattern. Let me show you. The market bulldozes its way higher. Great. Everyone gets long. Everyone think, wow, this is an amazing pattern. But the most uh, the most sacred point on the chart pattern here would be the low of this very, very extended bar. And if the low of that extended bar gets uh, surpassed, it completely invalidates whatever pattern you're, whatever bullish uh, overtures that you are seeing. And it would suggest that this market is headed lower. Let's take a look at the DAX as well. Now the DAX hasn't quite done it yet. The DAX is still up for the morning. Anyway, oh, so I was asked, how do I prepare in the morning? Well, a lot of the, look, and, and I think this is something that I would, I would like to spend much more time on at another point in time, but I can't deny the fact that I am absolutely sweltering up in my office today. And I perhaps want to actually strip down. And I know that you probably think, oh my God, it's going to be turning into a Magic mic show. It is not going to turn into a Magic mic show. This t-shirt shall remain on. I am not Matthew McConley. That will use any opportunity to take a shirt off. Um, but I perhaps would like to keep this session a little shorter. Um, now, girls, calm down. Calm. I would really like to spend some time with you where we go through how you prepare for the trading day. The way I see it is that when you start off on a trading day, you're going to have to contend with a certain amount of scenarios and there aren't that many scenarios. And let's take, for example, uh, a couple of typical scenarios that you will be familiar with. The market will either gap up or the market will gap down. Now the severity of the gap will dip, will uh, your, your response will be somewhat dependent on the severity of the gap. If it's an enormous gap, you might brace yourself for a, an enormously volatile trading session. But if it's a minor gap, then you might be thinking, well, it's probably going to get filled. Uh, but if you have a gap up, and I know I'm stating the obvious here, the market can either carry on and we have what's called a runaway gap or the market can turn around and it can work towards filling the gap. Yeah, I know I've stated the obvious. Please just bear with me one second because I'm not here. I'm not in the business of stating the obvious. Um, and that's what this whole channel is about, that we do it in real time. We do it live. Part of the part of your training as a trader is to have a response mechanism ready in case market the market does a, a behaves in a certain manner when the market caps up. So the, the simplest way that I could perhaps describe this is that um, if we're looking at a five minute chart in the, I think actually the FTSE might be a better example here today. Sorry, it's gonna have to be a two minute. So, and it, you can't even argue that we had a gap up today in the FTSE because the FTSE closed at uh, 7134 uh, on Friday. And at around 730, we were trading at 7142. And it's like a six point gap. It's hardly, it, it's hardly an monster gap. So what we have to do as traders is we have to have a a response mechanism ready depending on what we're seeing. So if we saw, for example, a double top shortly after the open 
as what you're seeing here, then we might want to say, okay, that's a double top. I recognize this as a double top. Maybe I'm selling the double top because there's there's the lowest risk to my capital. Or maybe, maybe I'm waiting for two black bars before I will sell short. And I use black bars. They could have been red bars, you know, whatever you use as a color denomination. <clears throat> and of course, the same could be said for uh, a gap down. Um, I know that a gentleman, a friend of mine called John Piper, he has a, uh, a system that he uses called, shit, what is it called? Kraut, Kraut Gap or Sauerkraut? Anyway, I don't want to give his, his secret away um, because obviously he, he's, he's selling that. Um, so I can only talk to you about how uh, I would play it. And then I'll be watching a, a five minute chart uh, sorry, the first five minute bar on a gap up or a gap down. And if the market breaches the, the, the bracket in the direction of filling the gap, then that would trigger a, uh, a you know, play for the gap to get filled. And then you need a stop loss, which can be somewhat arbitrary. So you obviously you don't want to have too big a stop loss. And that's what uh, John Piper's system has sort of He's made that very mechanical. And as I said, I don't want to give away uh, the secret. That's uh, um, that's his and his to keep. Um, and then you got all sorts of, of, of permutations uh, within that. So the, the scenario could also be that the market is basically just starting right from the get go. But one of the things that you must know about Mondays is that Mondays and Fridays are very significant because those are the days where you're most likely to get a real big move, a real big trend day. And the reason why I would like to go through all of these scenarios with you is because I think that one day I'm not going to be here and it would have been nice for me to have passed on the... Uh, all the, the, the all the preparation the preparational uh, preparatory framework that goes ahead before the opening bell and a lot of the preparation can actually be done before the market opens say during the weekend where you you go through the uh, you, you go through what, what what has the week been like was Wednesday the higher the week was Thursday the higher the week was Friday the higher the week did we open uh, did we close right at the highest on Friday was there divergence between the DAX and 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 the Dow and it it will build a picture which you can then use as a reference point and say well this surely must have happened before and in those past samples what happened then and whilst there's no guarantee that history repeats itself or even that it rhymes as the saying goes, it, it gives you an idea of, well, if this happens, this is how I want to play it. That's why I am upset with myself this morning because I had made a, a mandate for the morning, Monday morning saying, you need to be a buyer of the, of the FTSE. And then I got distracted. And it's just, hey, distractions can come in all shapes and form could also be an excuse for not implementing the plan if you dig deep psychologically. In this case, it was the Amazon courier. What what can you do? And you say, oh, and you're thinking, well, maybe I should just jump in now. Maybe just jump in now. So I missed it. And there's something for me to do as a, I need to reflect upon that as well, because a, I don't really, I'm not really in the business of, of missing a, a 30 or 40 point move in the FTSE, that's a, that's a big miss. You know, that's a bit like having a, you've done the preparation, you're standing in front of an open goal, the ball's right there, the goalkeeper is away, and you still manage to miss. All right. So what you can look forward to in this channel is a, a lot of grunt work, a lot of, uh, yeah, grunt work, grunt work and live trading. Grunt work in that We've done the prep, we've done the preparation, we have, uh, we've done our due research. Anyway, <clears throat> hey, <laughs> don't be sad I won't be here one day. None of us are gonna be here. <laughs> one day we're all gonna be gone. It sort of gives you a, a, a being a mindful of your own, uh, 
uh, mortality. A dark horse is from Sydney and it's 11 degrees Celsius. Wow. It's nice to have one up on Australia, isn't it? They're always the one reporting really warm. Anyway, um, I would like to, yeah, John Morrison, you're so right. None of us makes out of this alive. You're so right. So for those of you who are watching this in the, in the, in the time to come, these are just comments that I'm reading. Now, I'd like to give a big shout out to a gentleman called Yavi Ozola. Yavi Ozola on Friday basically timestamped everything that I did. And I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed at what he did. He's, he's essentially saying, well, if you want to hear talk, Tom talking about his Christmas Eve 2018 present, go to the 35th minute and the 50th second. If you want to talk about the mindset of losing traders, go to the 51 minute. So Yavi, I, I don't know what I have done to deserve this, but I really want to say thank you. That is an, an, an amazing achievement you've gone through. Um, I, I don't know, Lenny, whether I should post this, um, but, uh, or did you do it on YouTube? So, okay. <clears throat> so that's kind of, that's kind of what, uh, what's, what's going on. I definitely could have done much better this morning in the footsie. Yeah, it, uh, it's nice to be able to say How do I move this? Oh, come on. Okay. One thing I have learned. That's this. Boom. It's nice to be able to say we shorted here at 89. Yeah. That comes with a certain, well, I got to respect that. What's not so good in my book is that I told people that I was getting out here that I can be proud of. That's just absurd because I could have made twice as much as I did. But there you go. Yours truly, definitely not perfect. Definitely a little sleepy on a Monday morning. Definitely need to get air conditioning installed. And in the DAX, well, maybe my, maybe my call for the Dow is actually going to play itself out. Still short 34,502. So it's been a bit of a fragmented uh, streaming session. I hope you got something out of it. Richard Dennis would most certainly not be proud of my exit. You're absolutely right. All right. I will uh, begin to dig out those PowerPoint presentations. I did it for a brokerage up in London. It was the first time I did it. I think it's an Italian broker called Finico. Some really nice guys work there. If you guys are tuning in, big shout out to you. That was a pretty cool afternoon was down in your basement and I, there was, that was the first time I spoke about these, uh, uh, the, the day of the week patterns. I don't think I did that with, uh, with CMC. You know, it's hot if you need an air conditioning in the Netherlands, not exactly famous for your warm weather. All right. Hey guys, I love you all. I will uh, see you for the US session. Um, and I will dig out the PowerPoint presentations. And then I want to ask you something. And this is important. When are we going to have holiday this year? Because I need a break too, you know.
when are we going to do this? Or more importantly, where can we go? I need a holiday. <laughs> Yay, I love white. Boom. Australia is locked up. Ah, oh, Mick, I'm sorry about that. I want to say hi to a few people. Uh, thanks, Peter. Peter Amner. Vigilante. Eichler. Metahan. Kevin. Edward. Nabil. Thank you, guys. Andreas. Fender. Bender. <laughs> Hello, Anna from Portugal. Andreas. Someone from Mallorca. No, he's probably want to go to Mallorca. All right, Martin. Uh, apparently Dubai is open, but you have to put up with 45 degrees. Come to India. Don't you have a lovely, uh, you know, the people of, of the United Kingdom call it the Delta Indian variant. And I think they're a little bit uh, mindful of sending people to India or accepting them coming back. Bordeaux. I surfed in Bordeaux down by Biarritz. Okay, Neville, uh, if that's the case, I'll find it. Cape Town. I can't tell you how, how much I enjoy in these sessions. What I enjoy most here is that you guys are contributing, that you, you want to make money as well. You are contributing a big shout out to Peter there. That uh, was incredibly nice of you to share what, uh, what Al Brooks has been doing. And I know I'm a little bit sleepy this morning. You can probably even tell in my eyes. So I'm not exactly the eye of the tiger. I just, I can't thank you enough for all what you're bringing into this as well. It's just we're helping each other and that's important. We can still get what we want, all of us, and make big bucks whilst dragging a few of the slower ones with us as well. All right, greetings from... Ah. Now here's a funny one. Take a look at Benjamin's post. See, Benjamin, he posts and he says, Eastergade. Now, what you don't know about Eastergade is that that's Naughty Street in Denmark, in Copenhagen. Now, Naughty Street is where all the pawn shops are or were. Now, apparently, Eastergade is a very up and coming, but still, there's a few seedy elements around there. But in the old days, when I was a little youngling, Eastergade was this place of fascination because there was pawn shops and and tools shop if you know what I mean and we're not talking about DIY although we are talking about DIY but it's not it's not DIY on the on the home front <laughs> oh my god <laughs> quit while you're ahead here mate quit while you're ahead ha. it <laughs> it's <laughs> it's DIY from a uh, different point of view you're not mending the roof here. <laughs> so sorry, Benjamin, for giving away the game. <laughs> oh. I think I should just quit now because this is... <laughs> it is the red light district. You know, Amsterdam, that's what Easter Gale used to be, and maybe still is a little bit. There's a, <laughs> there's a Thai restaurant down there, <laughs> and I was looking for a place to eat with a friend of mine after, <laughs> this is a true story, okay? I've got to finish off. On a <laughs> that Thai restaurant is called Porn Sack. <laughs> I just gotta go. I just gotta, I just gotta go now because this is this is no longer trading. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Jesus. <laughs>